This week, I sit down with Lana Dingwall, a super successful online business coach who helps female entrepreneurs. Through her Facebook Lives and other platforms, she teaches and trains and inspires women worldwide to make more money while creating more time for things they love. So come on on and follow me. Hello, everyone. I hope you are having a wonderful week. I'm looking forward to hopping on today and telling you a little bit about where and how you can attract your ideal client consistently. And the keyword is attract. Hi, Lana, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm good. We met at a conference. Yes. where you really inspired women like me and other women to be entrepreneurs. So how did, what prompted you to be an entrepreneur yourself? Uh, I, I don't like rules. <laughs> I, think that, I think that when you're somebody that doesn't really like being told what to do and is naturally a leader, even if sometimes the only person they're leading is themselves, mm -hmm. entrepreneurship is a really obvious and easy path for you to eventually find yourself on. Okay. And you focus on women. Mm -hmm. Why women specifically? My background before mm -hmm. actually getting into business, I was a nonprofit. I did a lot of fundraising, which is pretty much marketing and sales. But one of the biggest things that was coming out in that industry was that in the nonprofit sector, so if you were to be taking microfinancing loans and giving them to men and women and giving them mentorship and then the finance loan was for them to start up a business, okay. the communities in which the women lived in were actually five times more likely to escape poverty than the communities that the guys lived in. And so it wasn't that the men weren't doing good things with their money and their mentorship, it's just that women are so much more community focused. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that if I focus on helping other people make more money and also living a life that it was rooted more in joy and things like that for them. I'm not only helping that person, but I'm actually also helping the world because those women will give more of their money and resources to their community members and it sort of ripples through. And you do that by yeah. helping women. Yes. Exactly. So how do you exactly help women yeah. make more money? Because that's your tagline. Yeah. Tag <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's a few, there's a few different ways. There's like the tactical way. Okay. So in the marketing and the sales kind of side of it. So I find a lot of the times as women in particular, we're really great at selling everything and everyone except for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And therefore, True. when it comes to it, because I work a lot with women who run service-based businesses, so the business is them, it's their brand, it's their entity, and they struggle with really putting themselves out there and being seen, and there's a lot of fear of judgment and everything like that. So I help them with all of the tactical side of it, but also the mindset side of it. I also find that unfortunately, as women, we don't always have the healthiest money mindset. And again, we have this guilt and shame around making money and around wanting to make money. And so when you mix that guilt with the, the fear and the judgment of putting yourself out there, it doesn't really work well. <laughs> That's true. And you don't make money. Yeah. And, and, and you do, you give a lot of tips through your mm. Facebook lives. Yeah. And that's where you get a lot of people engaged, having those difficult discussions yeah. around money. How did that start it for you? Like actually doing the Facebook live? Yes. Okay. So my own coach, I had a coach, I had a business coach. Okay. All, all good coaches have coaches. <laughs> we need that. Yeah. <laughs> and he actually told me I had to do a Facebook live video for my marketing. And to say that I was scared would be a vast understatement. <laughs> you were that scared? I was so scared. I'm not going to lie. I spent 20, over 24 hours preparing to do a 10-minute Facebook Live video. Oh I was God. so nervous. I wrote it out a million times, rehearsed over and over and over again, and eventually went live and did it. But I got such great positive feedback mm -hmm. from it that I really committed that, okay, I'm not just going to do that one live video. I'm going to keep showing up every week doing them more and more. And luckily, three years later, then I don't spend 24 <laughs> hours preparing for them. Yes. But it was when I first started, it was, it was a challenge. And I, I really felt that I, I had to do it. I couldn't let him down. But obviously, in the end, it was like, didn't want to let myself down. It paid off. Yeah. And, and what I like, I, I, ever since we met, I've been following you on social media. Yeah. And what I found, you, you really interact with people. Like, not only you're talking, but you see, you're reading the questions and you answer. Yeah. Do you think it's overwhelming sometimes? Like, I mean, now we're on a stage, everything's controlled. Yeah. But on Facebook, it could get pretty wild. Yes, I have had people <laughs> have had some weird questions. On, Such as? Uh, one time a man, an unknown man, 
asked mm -hmm. to see my pedicure over and over and over again throughout the video, but he was actually paying attention to the video because <laughs> he would plug in parts that I just said and then, but again, always bringing it back to like, show me your pedicure. <laughs> so <laughs> that one was, and in moments like that, you just kind of laugh it off and you keep going. But yes. I find with doing the Facebook live videos and actually reading the comments in real time, it's important and it is a skill that you learn, but it's important because that's how people actually feel connected to you and that's the importance and the beauty behind the live video. Otherwise, I could just pre-record a video and put it up for people to see, but I think what people enjoy is the fact that they can, if they're on live, ask questions and engage with me and that I'm going to actually engage with them back. And do you find there's a return in investment when you're doing those live? Because obviously you get, you know, people get to know you more. Yeah and they relate to you yeah. as not only the business person, but as a woman that's yeah. trying to do good in this world yeah. using social media. Yeah. But is there really a return in investment? I find sometimes we're doing so much on, online yeah. and it doesn't convey and do money after. For Facebook Lives, I know 100% there's the return. There's a return on investment. Good. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> like you gotta do Facebook Lives if you find if you run like a service-based business, and it's for a few reasons. One, with actually trying to attract clients you have to build like no trust factor with your audience and you have to actually build a big enough audience pool to have consistent clientele and so live video is a really great way to build like no trust factor with people before they ever work with you and i've had so many women and guys i have male clients too oh yeah they watch my videos and they'll say like, that's the reason why i picked you over someone else is I just I loved how engaging you were, I loved your content, and so it gave me a really good idea of what it would actually be like to work with you, mm -hmm. and then that's what made them reach out. So you do focus on women specifically, but you do work with men. Yes. You're open. Yes. That's good. Yeah, a any guy that's gonna come through all of my marketing to women, <laughs> you know, and they're still gonna ask to work with me, I'm like, that's my kind of guy, yes. so it's okay. <laughs> awesome. Well, another thing that I like, I like your website. Not only it's clean line and it's nice, you give a lot of free tools mm. so women could start planning their business accordingly. Mm -hmm. Why are you giving so many tools when you could actually sell them? I think like, you know, yeah. it's another stream of income. Yeah. Why do you put so much content free online on your website? P part of it is still a strategy piece. It does help build that like no trust factor. But the other component is I actually want my audience to make money. Like I believe in genuinely other women getting to go out and start their own business and do something that really makes them feel good. And often with women who are running service-based businesses, they're doing something like you even, you've been wanting to do this, this exact setup yes. for so long and you kept going, you kept going, you kept going, you kept going, you never gave up. And being able to help women like you and other women who are in similar positions, support them along their journey. Like you don't need to pay me <laughs> for me to want to see you succeed. That's so awesome. So I, I definitely like, and I, I do believe, and again, this brings it back to like why I want to support other women because as women, we tend to want to give more and be much more community oriented. It's not always about like what's the most tactical strategy, but also what strategy feels good and allows you to help your audience without them ever actually having to even interact with you other than being online. Mm -hmm. And another tool that I like, it's one of your books. Yes. Because you're a published author. I am. And what I found amazing, I, I didn't read it yet. Now yes. I have the book. Yes. But what I found really interesting when we go on your Instagram is not only you give nuggets of tips and information, mm -hmm. but you bring along a, a tribe of women. Yeah. As you could see, a whole bunch of women contributed yes. to this um, book. And you said on your social media, on Instagram, that you have dyslexia. Yes. Already, it's already difficult to write a book. Yeah. But with dyslexia, I mean, y you had to feel like superwoman when you when you had this book in your hand because yes. it's hard. It's hard to write a book. It is. How how hard was it for you? It was, and again, I think this is the power of community and why I really love working with women is. You, oh, I didn't do it alone. Mm. I had a whole community of people, guys as well. Like my brother, he is my brother is actually an incredible writer. So awesome. he was for sure my editor. <laughs> <laughs> but that's good. I think a lot of it is, you know, I am very dyslexic, and when I was younger, I was in remedial English. So you and I maybe could have been in the same English class. My English class was all people who had, uh, or English was their second language. Okay. And so from a really young age. 
I felt that language in particular and math, they weren't, well, they definitely weren't my strengths, mm -hmm. but it was something that I committed to figuring out and getting better at as I got older. And just because writing doesn't come naturally to me, mm -hmm. doesn't mean that I can't be good at it. It just means it might take me longer or more time. And again, have myself surrounded by people who are really good at it and who, who can mentor me and show me the way. Wow. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Thank you. Another thing that you have as a tool that's really, really super fun, and I travel a lot, and yeah. I listen to your podcast because okay, yeah. I think podcasts are becoming more and more popular. Yeah. And because I travel like with so many people, you have a podcast where you really get into it yes. about you know being a businesswoman. Yeah. So why did you have like you have Facebook, a podcast, yeah. a book? <laughs> But mm -hmm. your podcast seem to be really where you get, you know, you get people like in the mindset. Yeah. Why did, did you start with the podcast? No, I didn't. Uh, it's so though it's funny with the book, the I'd been wanting to start a podcast for a really long time and it's like a lot of things in business you say, "Okay, I'm going to do it when, I'm going to do it when," or in life in general, <laughs> "I'm going to do it when, I'm going to do it when." And I kept putting off the podcast and I knew that it was something that I would be good at and I knew it was something that my audiences would really resonate with, but again, all the fear and the doubt and who am I to have a podcast and all of that kind of stuff mm -hmm. was coming up. So when I was putting out the book, what I did was actually put it in my bio that I had a podcast. Therefore, I knew <laughs> that I had to launch the podcast by the date that the book was published. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So you did both yeah. simultaneously. And it's actually the name of my story is called Changing the Story. And then that's also the name of my podcast. Wow. And who, what kind of people, like I've, I've listened to a few ones, mm -hmm. but what what could people expect from mm -hmm. your podcast? I think realness, that's something that I get a, a lot from people. It, it's the perfect mixture of getting actual tangible takeaway business strategies, but also getting to really know the people behind those strategies. So whether it be me or whether it be the person that it is that I'm interviewing, because that's something I find we hear a lot about, again, strategies and the 30 step plan to making a million dollars in 90 days and all of those things they can work but the problem is is that there's no personality or people behind them and so one of the things that I love with the concept of the podcast changing the story is it's it's meant to change the story that we tell about entrepreneurship and particularly change the story that we as women tell ourselves mm -hmm. because I have women who are clients who run super successful businesses and they still don't always consider themselves to be entrepreneurs because in their mind an entrepreneur is kind of like a white dude in a suit that works on Wall Street. And so the, uh, the podcast is great because it also identifies their fears and their insecurities and it validates them that it's okay to have doubt and it's okay to like not have to know everything and that's not a sign that you're not on the right track. In fact, it's a sign that you are. Yes, and, and you really serve a diverse uh, group of people yourself. You consider yourself diverse because you yeah. are a lesbian. Yes. Um, was it hard? To, to to be a businesswoman and a lesbian in this this kind of environment we're in Ottawa let's yeah just say. yeah and I think at first it I felt a little invisible but at the same time like I could also make myself invisible so if I dress not like this <laughs> <laughs> but if I dress there's nothing wrong no with I know this. but sometimes you know you give away little clues as to as to who you are and so I do find in the Ottawa community, there, when I first got into it, there weren't a lot of other kind of mm -hmm. queer women in business or a lot of other gay people in general that I was meeting in business. But I'm really fortunate, even in just in the last month, Ottawa has started to come together with a queer business community, which is really awesome because it's just, it's just nice to know that there's other people out there that are like you who can identify with similar setbacks. You're not always sure when you're talking to someone even though it's 2019, at least yeah. the time that we are recording this, <laughs> and, you know, it's 2019, homophobia is still a really real thing. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes you're not really sure how you, you're going to be received. And when you go to talks and things, like, especially as a woman in business, everyone's always referring to your partner as only ever being male and things like that. But those are just things you got to, they don't mean it, you know, they don't know. You they just don't like, know. Yeah, they don't mean any harm by it. But, um, you, when I, we met, you came with your partner. Yeah. And that was really interesting. We were a group of women with, with, with one guy, I think, and it, yeah. that was your cameraman. Oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remember that. And what was fun about it is, like, everybody had a different style mm -hmm. to do their talk, and you were, like, a mix of business. You yeah. said the real stuff at the beginning. Yeah. I was like, this girl's not playing. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 but what I loved about you, 
I loved every talk, but yeah. you had your own voice. It was mm. quite different. You had your own look. Yeah. Did it take time to develop that signature, that brand that you had to, mm. for your talks? I would say yes. Yes and, <laughs> yes and no, right? I think it, 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 it's always been in me because it, it's who I am. Mm -hmm. But they're, like anything when we're doing it, we try really hard to fit in, especially in the space of business and in public speaking. And when you're putting yourself out there, you want to rock the boat as little as possible. Or at least that's what I told myself. <laughs> and then I realized, like, screw that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rock the boat it. however I want. Uh, and I've been finding the more and more that I own who I am and I show up as who I am, the better it is for me, but it's also the better it is for my business and I bring in like-minded people into my community. That's so awesome. And last, recently you went to see somebody pretty yes. big, yes. Michelle Obama in yes. Montreal. And I think not even two days after that, you were live on Facebook yeah. <laughs> and you were saying what you thought about her messaging. Yes. What really resonated with you? For that talk because I was there as yeah. well and there was other things that I picked up yeah but you went live and people were were your tribe was there and it yes. was like oh my god I wasn't there but yeah. I'm so happy you're talking about it yeah so what really resonated with you from the Michelle Obama talk well everything oh, it's <laughs> Michelle Obama <laughs> everything I think there was two really big things that I, I took away from that talk and the first is if when you see her history mm -hmm. she's just an average woman That's true. and she's very very much a self-made woman and I did not know at all I think classically how kind of sometimes women who have really successful hu husbands we just assume that he's the successful one and they're not and the thing that I really realized with Michelle Obama's uh, I guess resume is I'm like other than president her resume is way nicer than his and way and more long. accomplished yes. yeah she is a powerhouse woman and so for it, it was just, again, like the idea that we, it doesn't matter where we start. All that matters is, is the work and the dedication we put into it along the way. And then the other thing was just, she didn't say it, but it was the, the ambiance of, of everything that was going on was just like, you don't need other people's permission to share your message. And that comes back to social media and online. We live in a space where sometimes we wait, we want someone to give us permission and tell us we're good enough to share our message. And the biggest thing I took away from the Michelle Obama talk was you can anoint yourself, you have the permission, and just like get out there, take up the space, even if it's a small amount of space, and share your message. You don't have to wait for someone else to tell you that you're good enough. Lana? We're digging into your phone. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> um, but you know what? We just want to know who do you follow. Okay, yeah. And um, because, you know, you're inspiring. And we want to know what inspires you. So I'm going to give you the phone. Okay. And pick whoever you want. But let me see if I can find something really interesting. So you like jewelries. You like decor. Um, I'm going to give you the phone. Yeah, who do like you follow? Who? Who would be more likely somebody that you would follow on Instagram or on social media overall? Pretty much anyone who inspires me. I, I make it my mission to not follow people who kind of inflict jealousy or envy or people who I don't agree with their message. Like anything that's going to make me feel not good on social media because I, I, social media gets a bad rep. Yes. It but does. I, I think that it has the potential to really inspire you and motivate you. And mm -hmm. so I... Follow a lot of people like this woman, hippie witchy mama, like just people who are different and doing their own thing, you know, and it's fun to just see what people are up to. I also, I think because I run a business, I get a lot of targeted ads. Yeah, <laughs> same here. But yeah, I just love following people who, who inspire me. Uh, Do you like cooking? I see food. Yeah. Well, and I like to follow a lot of people. I have a tendency to... Uh, if people follow me and I look at their stuff and I like it, I want to follow them back because, again, I think social media is about building community. So I also follow a lot of people who I've never met them before. They just followed me and I looked up their social media and they looked cool too, so I followed them back. Yeah. And sometimes we, you know, we, we could communicate back and forth with each other. True. I do follow a lot of breweries. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah, the Quirky Carrot is just outside Ottawa and this is like a women's run business. So I, I also do love supporting a lot of other in the Ottawa local businesses and yes. following them and seeing what they're up to. It's it, always really fun. And some of your clients are here in Ottawa. Exactly, yeah. I want to show our viewers your page because it's really well organized. 
and as you know a brand specialist that you are i find it's really important to see like i really like it you see coaching you have it in french but people will understand but oh sorry but it's really interesting like your podcast it's blue your favorite color that's your brand blue and purple yeah uh -huh. yes uh -huh. and this is where we could get your your book can we buy it from Instagram directly from Instagram? No, I don't have a link to it on Instagram. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. But you can check out my my podcast and everything from Instagram. Yes, and I could see it from your page here. You are very outdoorsy. Is that one of your favorite sport? No, it was. I run a retreat uh -huh. at like usually two times a year, and one of the women I have come and she teaches archery. Wow. And that's what it is, and she teaches archery from a place of like empowerment and really getting into our bodies and feeling centered and focusing on a target. And, and you listen to her explain archery and it's very, very compatible with how you would explain business. So that's just us at one of the retreats doing archery. It was really yes. fun. And what I like on your, your social media page is like you mix business and pleasure. Yes. We see you with your friends, we see you working. See and me dress up as a dog. <laughs> <laughs> for Where's Halloween, that? this one here. Yes, it's me well, for Halloween. Halloween. You're very cute. I didn't even recognize you. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Um, also, on your cell phone, yeah. um, what are the popular apps that you use almost every day, or that are really useful? Yeah, I definitely love the podcast app yeah. on my iPhone. Not just because I have a podcast. I actually never listen to my <laughs> own podcast. But again, I really like being in this perpetual state of always learning and always being inspired by other people. And there are just so many incredible podcasts out there. So I use my podcast app very frequently. Do you have one podcast that you would highly recommend for our viewers to to listen to? I really love uh, Lori Harder's podcast called Earn Your Happy. And mm -hmm. I, I just find I really resonate with her message because it, it's all about, again, anointing yourself and taking back your own power and reclaiming it. So I, I, I highly recommend her podcast. I really enjoy it. What other apps that you use on your daily businesswoman venture? Yes, definitely Facebook <laughs> and Instagram. Obviously. <laughs> Probably a little bit too much. But I do, again, I love using those apps because social media, it's meant to be social and we can we can have it kind of be a little soul sucking and take up our time or you, we can use it really strategically. And I find, especially as someone that works by myself a lot at home, social media apps are a really great way for me to still connect with people and also just connect with friends and family that don't potentially live in the Ottawa area. So what's next for you? Ooh, there's a lot of things. <laughs> How much time so do we at have? Least one. <laughs> What's next for what's, Lana? What's Dingwall? next for me? Yeah. I would say one of the things is I want to publish my own full book. Cool. So that's like a chapter okay. in a book, but I want to do an entire book where it's my, like everything is me and really go big and own the fact that it's going to be challenging and hard. Mm -hmm. But I, I do know that I have messages that I want to share with people. And if I keep hiding, then I don't get to share them with all the people that I want to share them with. So. And what would be your ideal client? and all of that because you are a businesswoman yes. you all have a uh, ideal client what yes. would be your ideal client my ideal client is a woman who runs a service-based business that has a big focus in either directly or indirectly in like serving other people so whether they are like other coaches or consultants or trainers or their their mission is really rooted in improving their community or the world in some way and they're good at what they do but they mm. can't seem to figure out how to create enough traction or momentum around their brand or their business to consistently be making the amount of money and consistently be getting the amount of clients that they need to have the level of impact that they want both on the world but also on their bank account. Mm -hmm. And what, what would be your level of impact that you see for yourself in two or five years? I, I would love my level of impact to be like millions of women, millions of people in general. Okay. But my idea is like, I'm going big. You're going like, big. I'm going big. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to follow you yes. going big yes. on social media. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you for coming over to the set of Follow Me. And yes, we're going to follow pleasure. you for sure. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>